This conference will now be recorded. Hello students, good evening. Uh, we are going to start our uh, class now in continuation of our uh, last class. If you recall, um, we you know, discussed till question uh, 10. Question 11 also we uh, you know, started discussing. Uh, uh, I hope uh, I am able to uh, you know, uh, you, all of you are able to, you know, listen to me very clearly. In case of any issue, please do let me know. The question 11, uh, you know, is if the earth stops rotating, the value of G at the equator will be what? Will it increase or decrease or no effect or none of this? The Earth possesses rotational motion. If you, you know, just discuss the theory. The Earth possesses rotational motion about an axis through its poles. The value of acceleration due to gravity at a place at given latitude is affected due to its rotational motion. If Earth ceases to rotate, the weight of a body at equator will increase. However, there will be no effect on the weight on at poles. The effect of rotation of the earth on acceleration due to gravity is to decrease its value. Therefore, if earth stops rotating, the value of G is going to increase. And we get the correct option as A. Okay, so let's move to the next question. <coughs> Sorry. That is question number 12. It says that, suppose the gravitational force varies inversely as the nth power of distance. Suppose the gravitational force varies, the nth power of the distance, then the time period of a planet in circular orbit of radius r will be what? Now, as we see in this question, is that, you know, the formation of a planet in circular orbit, we know the centripetal force should be equal to the gravitational force. See, so if I write elaborately, for motion of a planet for motion of a planet in circular orbit the centripetal force centripetal force is equal to the gravitational force Now, as centripetal force is equal to the gravitational force, so we know what is centripetal force is equal to m r into omega square. m r into omega square that should be equal to the gravitational force. And now, according to the question, the gravitational force varies inversely as the nth power of distance. 
So here we should write here g m into m divided by r power n. So from here we find the value of omega as we find the value of omega as square root of g into m g into capital M divided by r power n plus 1 since m cannot be equal to 0 that's why you are able to cancel it so now what is the time period then the time period as you know the time period is equal to 2 pi by omega 2 pi by omega so that is equal to 2 pi into omega 1 by omega so that should be that c square root of r power n plus 1 divided by g into m that is equal to 2 pi by square root of gm into r power n plus 1 by 2 correct so now we see that 2 pi by square root of g and g square root of g into m is a constant so from here what we can conclude we can conclude is that t is proportional to r power n plus 1 by 2 and as we get this thing you know we get the correct option as a okay. so i will strongly encourage as you know this question paper this unit test paper for gravitation is already you know available in the online test platform i encourage you to appear this in the online test platform i have seen uh, you know several of you appeared it but always analyze that where is the you know you know missing link where where things went wrong and get it clarified for me from me so as time goes by as you know that in each unit test there are 50 questions so you know uh, i will skip few questions uh, you know uh, because i want you to involve into answering those questions if you are not able to you know answer those questions then you always can get back to me so uh, you know as time goes by we'll skip few questions so that you can also be in the uh, you know engaged discussion okay so now let's come to the question number 13 question number 13 says that two spherical two spherical bodies two spherical bodies of mass m and 5m of mass m and 5m <clears throat> on and red i r and 2r respectively are released in free space with initial separation between their centers equal to 12r if they attract each other due to gravitational force only then the distance covered by the smallest body just before collision is what that we are going to find okay so <clears throat> you know um, we can uh, draw this thing by means of a you know um, uh, you know a diagram so uh, it will be clear and then followed by we, we can start answering it okay so uh, you know uh, it says that uh, you know if they attract each other due to the gravitational force only then what will be the distance you know uh, uh, covered by the smaller body just before the collision okay so let's assume just before the collision you know the distance traveled by both the bodies you know the the, the smaller body b x1 so if we draw the diagram it will be something like this suppose this is the smaller body which is having a radius of r unit 
and this is the you know the larger body which is having a radius of suppose not suppose it is given two r units now if they initially their distance between them was 12 bar now if they collide that means this will be r this distance is r and this distance is 2r 3r that means the distance between these two will be you know 9r it has to be 9r because this is r and this is 2r so this has to be 9r okay so distance between the bodies has to be you know uh, you know 9r when they you know uh, so the actual distance between the bodies is 9r now if the smaller body that means the left hand one that is the smaller body if it traverses a distance suppose we are assuming that it traverses a distance of x1 that means this is the value of x1 and the larger body that actually traverses a distance x2 now according to our question we need to find the value of x1 the gravitational force acting between the two spheres depend on the distance which is a variable quantity that we know so what is the gravitational force then so we can write the gravitational force gravitational force so that we can define as you know as it is a parameter of x so fx is equal to you know the masses of the bodies that is you know first is g into m into 5m divided by the distance between them so what is that distance 12r is a distance and if they come each other it it traverses a distance of x that 12 minus x whole square correct so this is quite simple right that we know the gravitational force acting between the two spheres depend on the distance which is a variable quantity as the distance between them is 12 bar so you know if the distance you know traverses is x then it has to be 12 bar minus x will be the you know that you know resultant distance between the two you know spheres so this is the gravitational you know uh, uh, force now because of this gravitational force what is the acceleration of the smaller body so let the acceleration of the smaller body be a1x so acceleration acceleration of the smaller body acceleration of the smaller body that we are assuming as a1x so that will be what you know we know force is equal to mass into acceleration as the mass of the smaller body is m so its acceleration should be g into 5m divided by 12r minus x whole square isn't it and similarly the acceleration of the bigger body so acceleration acceleration of the bigger body that is we define as that a2x that is equal to obviously it will be g into m divided by 12 bar minus x whole square correct now as we have defined that smaller you know sphere the smaller body has traversed a distance x1 then what is the equation you know you know kinematics equation we can use 
it is x1 is equal to ut plus half a1 x t square u is 0 here isn't it so we can use the laws of you know that in a kinematics formula so we get what we get x1 is equal to u into t which is 0 by the way okay let me write 0 into t plus hop into acceleration of the smaller body is a 1 x into the time duration square t square and similarly we will get x2 is equal to 0 into t plus hop into a 2 x into t square so now from these two equation what you can it is now all belongs to this you know mathematical you know simplification what is our purpose our purpose so here i would like to spend some time to explain you that how to approach this kind of problem so what so that is defined by what is our purpose here our purpose is to find the value of x1 now as our purpose is to find the value of x1 and we know x1 plus x2 is equal to 9r then one thing is very clear that if we can express x1 in terms of x2 it is very easy to find the value of x1 in terms of r because we know x1 plus x2 equal to 9r now so that actually you know gives us the you know confidence to proceed to the next step that our task is to find the value of x1 in terms of x2 and to do that the best way to do is that to make x1 by x2 so from these two equations okay just a minute i got a query um uh, uh, just let me go through it yes uh, 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 the acceleration of the smaller body uh um no re not really uh pratik why you know because smaller body smaller body has a mass small you know m so mass into acceleration so for the smaller body you know smaller body will always have the higher acceleration right so smaller body from here you can just exclude that m into acceleration is g into 5m correct you got the point i hope all right so now let's come back to the discussion so if we make x1 by x2 so what we get x1 by x2 we are going to get is equal to half a1 x t square by half a2 x t square so half t square will get cancelled so we will left up with a1 x divided by a2 x since t square obviously cannot be equal to zero but from a mathematical you know uh, you know language point of view it is better to write that so now if we see that a1 x by a2 x this is nothing but this is actually five so from there what we get x1 by x2 is equal to a1x a1x is equal to g into 5m divided by 12 bar minus x whole square divided by g into m divided by 12 bar minus x whole square from there we get x1 by x2 is equal to 5 because the rest of the stuff is not equal to 0 since g into m divided by 12 bar minus x whole square that cannot be equal to 0 so from here we find the value of x1 is equal to 5x2 so this is one equation 
and that is another equation we already obtained at the very beginning that is x1 plus x2 is equal to 9r now if we combine these together and solve it we will find the value of you know x1 plus x2 x2 is equal to what x1 by 5 is equal to 9r and so from here we find x1 is equal to 5 into 9r divided by 6 so this is 2 this is 3 so 15r by 2 that implies x1 is equal to 7.5 r now 7.5 r is the option c i hope things are clear you know so this is a perfect example of how we can use you know the formula of kinematics to find the distance traversed by two bodies under gravitational force of attraction and the question i got from pratik uh, i hope you understood why the smaller uh, you know body will have the larger acceleration of g into 5m by 4r uh, sorry 12 bar minus x whole square if you still have any doubt uh, yeah thanks pratik for your confirmation okay so now let's proceed to the next question <clears throat> So the next question, uh, there is a small, you know, a mistake here. So this should be E, not A. There are five options in this question. So if you look into this question, it says that a body is projected with a velocity. A body is projected with a velocity 2 into 11.2 kilometer per second okay from the surface of earth the velocity of the body when it escapes the gravitational pull of earth is what that is the you know question we are going to answer so uh, you know here we need to find the you know the kinetic energy and from that kinetic energy, we can, you know, answer the question. So what will be the resultant kinetic energy? The resultant kinetic energy should be that, okay, let me write the expression. Okay, so here we find the kinetic energy. Why kinetic energy? Because apart from this kinetic energy, change in kinetic energy, there is no way we can compute the velocity. So here it is half into m into v0 square minus half into m into 11.2 whole square. Obviously. Now what is v0? So we get, according to the question, half into m, v0 is nothing but 2 into 11.2 whole square minus half into, as it is, half into m into 11.2 whole square. So from here, what we can take common, half into m into 11.2 whole square, we take common then we get here 4 minus 1 that is 3 so we get here that kinetic energy is equal to <clears throat> you know half into m into 3 into 11.2 whole square now this kinetic energy is nothing but half mv square if this is the velocity if v is the <clears throat> okay okay 
so v is the velocity with which the body escapes so then this half m v square should be equal to half m into 3 into 11.2 whole square so half m half m got cancelled we can get i'm sorry we can get v we can v square is equal to we can take you know 3 into 11.2 whole square so from here we get the value of v is equal to root 3 into 11.2 since v cannot be less than 0 hence we are consider in this context v cannot be less than 0 so we consider only the positive value that root 3 into 11. Point, you know 2 you know meter per sec kilometer per second yeah absolutely anaga uh, i can explain you the first step the first step is that you know uh, if you see that to the velocity through which the you know, escape velocity what is actually given it is 11.2 right now the body is projected with the velocity twice of that so as the body is projected twice of that velocity then what we can get out of it is that the what will be the change in the kinetic energy and the change in that kinetic energy will help us to find that you know uh, the v square because kinetic energy has an expression related to the velocity your question is very you know i i do understand your question that how to approach this kind of problem that's what we actually spend time here here you see if you go through the question only we are aware of two velocities one velocity with which it is projected and the another velocity which we should be knowing and that is the escape velocity from the surface of the earth that is 11.2 so these are the changes in velocities from 2 into 11.2 to 11.2 because 11.2 is the bare minimum velocity for that is not bare minimum that is the escape velocity now as now this changes in velocity only happens change in the kinetic energy now you can ask why kinetic energy why the formula of kinetic energy you are applying here if you ask this question answer is that kinetic energy is the only one which can gives you the value of that kinetic energy in terms of m and b and which is half mv square so that is why the change in kinetic energy should be obtained by the velocity that is half mv square should be equal to you know half mv0 square where v0 is equal to 2 into 11.2 whole square minus the escape velocity uh, whole square into half into m correct so i hope it is clear uh, anaga any doubt please do let me know okay so um, okay thanks thanks for your confirmation that you understood okay now let's uh, you know proceed to the so we get the correct option as option a and we can proceed so these are the concepts so that's why i choose these specific questions if you see the varieties of questions you know the way i choose is that you know this will build you the good confidence to you know proceed with the next you know question any unknown question if you face later you know um, this solving this kind of questions will give you enough confidence and as you know in our online test platform there are enormous questions you know we and uh, that we have an eminent set of faculty members those who sit together and design these questions uh, you know to make uh, your uh, you know to realize how well you understood that you know the topics anyway so let me go to the next question that is question uh, 15 so the question here is that which of the following statements about the gravitational constant is true? I hope you will be able to answer this one. The gravitational constant, 
can any can all of you please answer this one so that uh, i can uh, think of that what is your understanding you can in the chat box you can write what is what you think which option should be the correct one the question is simple but it is also a tricky one okay i got answer from pratik so far thanks rest i got your answer from you as well anaga pralad and anyone else yeah it is option d indeed so you know why because it is uh, you know a gravitational constant is not a force it has no unit that is also not true it has a unit it has the same value in all system of unit that is not true because in cgs fps or si units it has a different value but the option d is really you know uh, you know clear here it does not depend on the nature of the medium in which the bodies are kept so that is why it is known as universal gravitational constant as well okay so now let's proceed to the next question Okay, so let's proceed to the next question, which is question 60. Sorry, question 16. Okay. So the weight, uh, you know, according to this question, the weight of a body. The weight of a body on surface of the earth is 12.6 Newton. When it is raised to a height half the radius of Earth, its weight will be what? Okay. So one thing is very clear, which option cannot be? Can you tell me which option cannot be? At least one option you can, you know, by looking into it, you can say this option cannot be. Yes, absolutely. No, Pratik, uh, you know, uh, Pratik, your answer is not, you know, I'll come back to you. Yeah, exactly. Option D cannot be correct because as it goes up, you know, the, you know, acceleration due to gravity actually start reducing. As it is reducing, obviously the weight will also get reduced. So if the weight is on the surface of the earth is 12.6 Newton, it cannot be more than 12.6 Newton when it is raised to a height, any height. In this case, the half of the radius of Earth. So what formula you need to use? If you recall the formula, the at height h, the acceleration due to gravity, okay, at height h, if we, you know, find the, if you consider the acceleration due to gravity be g prime, Okay, let, so I'm writing it here, let the acceleration due to gravity, let the acceleration acceleration due to gravity at height h at height h above the earth surface surface b g prime then what do you get the g prime then we know the formula g prime is equal to g into R square divided by R plus H whole square. Correct. Now, in context to our question, this H is nothing but R by 2. So, if we apply the value of H is equal to R by 2, 
we get g prime is equal to g into you know r square divided by r plus r by 2 whole square now if you simplify i'm not going to the further simplification because this is you know pure you know algebraic simplification you will find this is coming to be 4 into g divided by 9 okay so now what will be the value of uh, so weight so so weight at height h so the required weight so the you know the height so the no, not height sorry weight i'm sorry weight at h which is equal to r by 2 is equal to mass what is mass 12.6 12.6 into g prime that is 4 by 9 into g so m into g that is 12.6 that is m into g it is already given m into g is 12.6 into you know uh, into 4.9 okay so anyway if we write in a more you know uh, clear manner so this weight will be what will be m into g prime so m into g prime is what g prime we already found it out this is equal to 4 into g divided by 9 so that is equal to 4 by 9 into m into g and this m into g is already given as 12.6 newton so that is equal to 4 into 12.6 divided by 9 4 into 12.6 divided by 9 it turned out to be you know 5.6 you know newton and we get the correct option as b i hope things are clear this is a straightforward question this is not not a difficult question by the way Okay, so let's proceed to the question 17. And the question is like this. In a satellite, in a satellite, <clears throat> if the time of revolution is T, then kinetic energy is proportional to what? Okay. So, if you recall from the theory, the velocity of satellite, you know, is square root of g into m by r. So, what is the velocity of satellite? So, velocity of satellite. that is v is equal to square root of g into m divided by r and another thing is that we know that kinetic energy is proportional to v square obviously because half m v square kinetic energy is proportional to v square so now so as in the previous step, what we see, we see V is equal to square root of GM by R. That means V square is equal to GM by R without having the square root. So as G and M are constant, from here, what you can see, V square is proportional to 1 by R. And here we see that kinetic energy is proportional to V square. That means kinetic energy is proportional to 1 by R. From these two information, we can conclude this, that V square is proportional to, sorry, V uh, square is proportional to 1 by R, and kinetic energy is proportional to V square. Now, if we club together, then we get this information, kinetic energy is proportional to, <coughs> sorry, you know, kinetic energy is proportional to 1 by R. 
Now we know uh, one fundamental thing is that t square is proportional to r cube. T square is proportional to r cube. So that means from here what we can get is that you know t power 2 by 3 is proportional to r that means r is proportional to t power 2 by 3 that means 1 by r is proportional to t power minus 2 by 3 now kinetic energy is proportional to 1 by r and 1 by r is proportional to t power minus 2 by 3 so let's club together if we club together so it leads us to conclude the kinetic energy is proportional to t power minus 2 by 3 and we get the correct option as d this question is also not you know that you know uh, you know uh, difficult all you need to know the different formulas and to come to a common uh, you know parameter called t in this context to the question let's come to the next question that is question number 18 so a geostationary satellite <clears throat> is orbiting the earth at a height 6r okay at a height 6r above the surface of the earth r being the radius of the earth what will be the time period of another satellite at a height 2.5 r from the surface of the earth Okay, so now what we can proceed here? So the way to proceed here is that, you know, the first thing should be used here is the Kepler's law of periods. And Kepler's law of periods says that, you know, let me write it down. So according to Kepler's law of periods according to Kepler's law of periods What we get t square is proportional to a cube t square is proportional to a cube what is a a is nothing but the semi major axis semi major axis now in case in this there are two cases we can say that first one is that uh, the for the first satellite as you know a is 7r in the first case so there are two cases case one in this case a is equal to you know 7r as satellite is 6r above the earth and for a geostationary it's okay so what is a in this case a is equal to 7r because we need to consider the radius of the earth also right so radius of the earth is r and above that radius of the earth means above the surface of the earth the you know satellite is at a height of 6r so in this case what we find the a the semi major axis is equal to 7r okay and for a geostationary satellite okay we know the t is equal to 24h okay isn't it so for geostationary satellite for
जियो स्टेशनरी फॉर जियो स्टेशनरी सैटेलाइट ओके वी नो टी इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी फोर इंटू एच सो फ्रॉम हियर व्हाट यू कैन गेट using that formula t square is proportional to a cube we can get that 24h is proportional to 7r whole cube 7r whole cube and that we can give as equation 1 now in case 2 what do we get case 2 is for the you know the another satellite so in this case a should be is equal to r plus 2.5 r so r should be here 3.5 r because as i explained uh, in the first case that you need to consider the radius of the earth which is r and above the surface of the earth it is at a height of 2.5 r so the a the length of the semi major axis in this context is that 3.5 r so now we do not know what is the you know time period of this you know second satellite because uh, that is what we need to find so let's assume this is equal to t so from here what we get so if we assume t be the time period of the second satellite so then yeah you are correct absolutely correct whoever it is uh, you know 24h whole square uh, you know some let me find who actually uh, raised this point yeah anaga you are correct absolutely correct it is 24h whole square yep true yes in fact we can ignore that h uh, you know it is 24 let me ignore that h h is not uh, you know important here so you are correct thanks thanks for detecting this should 24h you know 24 you know whole square is proportional to you know 7r whole cube and here also as you do not know let's assume it is t t so t square is proportional to 3.5r whole cube So let's give this to equation number two. Now, from this equation one and equation two, we need to find the value of t. Now, after that, the question doesn't belongs to physics at all. So what we can do? We can, you know, as this proportion are same, the proportionally constant proportionality constant should also be same. Okay. So that means what? Twenty four square. If we write from here. you know if we write that 24 square is equal to the proportionality constant is k into 7r cube okay so here also you can write that t square should be equal to k into 3.5r whole cube because uh, proportionality constant should remain the same so what we can do is that we can divide this from equation 1 by equation 2 so what we get is that 24 by t whole square 24 or we can write 24 square by t square that should be equal to 7 r cube divided by 3.5 r cube that means 7 cube divided by 3.5 cube so now if we you know you know simplify further so from there we get the value of t square is equal to 24 square because 3.5 into 2 is 7 so 24 square by 2 cube so that is equal to 24 square by 2 cube so now if we simplify further we will get that t is equal to 6 into root 2 so what will be the time period the time period will be 6 into root 2h which is option a i hope things are clear 
any doubt please do let me know never hesitate this is from the you know planetary motion Okay, so let's go to the next question. That is question 19. It says that a satellite moves in elliptical orbit about a planet. The maximum and minimum velocities of satellites are 3 into 10 to the power 4 meter per second and 1 into 10 to the power 3 meter per second respectively. What is the minimum distance of satellite from the planet if maximum distance is 4 into 10 to the power 4 kilometer? Okay. So here you know to think about something on angular momentum okay and the concept of angular momentum has to be you know bring here as no external torque acts on this system then the angular momentum of the system does not change okay so what we can say is that so from here as you know the angular momentum of the system doesn't change so we get tau is equal to 0 and what you know tau as tau is nothing but dl dt dl dt that is equal to 0 and dl dt is only possible to be 0 if l is constant because differentiation of a constant is equal to 0 so l has to be constant so that means during the maximum and minimum what we can conclude is that we can conclude is that m into v max m into v max into r min that is equal to m into v min v min m into v min into r max correct so from here what we can find from here we can find that what is the minimum distance of the satellite from the planet that means we need to find the value of r min r min is equal to v min into r max v min sorry v min into r max divided by you know v max now in the for the right hand side all the values are known to us so we find the value of r min equal to what is the b min b min is equal to 1 into 10 to the power 3 according to the question 1 into 10 to the power 3 into r max r max is 4 into 10 to the power 4 divided by what is v max v max is equal to 3 into 10 to the power 4 3 into 10 to the power 4 so if we simplify all these things you know i am not going to details about this algebraic simply but it is quite simple it is 4 by 3 into 10 to the power 3 so we get the value of r min as 4 by 3 correct exactly 4 by 3 into but you know Pratik, this is being discussed in planetary motion, so uh, that's why it comes under the territory of, uh, you know, gravitation. So, so we get R min is equal to 4 by 3 into 10 to the power 3 kilometer. And we get the correct option as C. okay okay so what happened is that you know um, you know I, I can discuss you the, this thing in details uh, because uh, you know Pratik uh, that when the you know 
the angular momentum of the system doesn't change then l is constant so what is l how you can obtain the value of l it is mbr if you go to the you know uh, dynamics part so it has to be maximum velocity with the minimum uh, you know uh, radius that should be equal to as l is constant l cannot change so it has to be uh, if v max r mean then it has to be r max v mean okay as and why it is constant because there is no external torque act on a system if you need to know more about it then we can discuss uh, you know separately uh, so that uh, you know um, we we can discuss more and come to uh, you know i can clear any doubt you you may have okay now let's uh, you know uh, go to the next question that next question is uh, you know question 20 okay thank you thanks for your confirmation that you understood okay so next question is question 20 and it says that <clears throat> you know let me read out this question a satellite is revolving around the planet the gravitational force between them varies with r power minus 5 by 2 where r is the radius of the satellite the square of the time period t will be directly proportional to what it is not that difficult a question okay so how to answer that one is that you know similar kind of question we have done today you know the gravitational force provides the required centripetal force that should be the point of discussion here because you know time period is required here and time period has a direct relationship with omega so what we can write here is that the gravitational force provides the required centripetal force so gravitational force gravitational force provides the required centripetal force so what does it mean it means is that as we have done earlier today m omega square r is equal to g into m into m divided by r to the power 5 by 2 because uh, according to the question it is r to the power 5 by 2 okay is the gravitational force between them varies with r to the power minus 5 by 2 so that means by r to the power 5 by 2 so from here what you can find from here what you can find is that so this gives us an idea is that you know m into m into omega is 2 pi by t so omega square will be 4 pi square divided by t square t square i'll bring into the denominator into r so okay so this r we can bring it in the down r power 1 so it will be g into m into m by r power 5 by 2 plus 1 that is r power 7 by 2 so from here what we get the square of the time period is our concern so t square should be equal to you know this m and m got cancelled so we get 4 pi square divided by g into m into r to the power 7 by 2 now if you see whatever i wrote in the bracket that is 4 pi square gm all are constant 
so from here what you can conclude t square is proportional to r to the power 7 by 2 correct and we get the correct option as option b i hope things are clear here okay now let's go to the question 21 question number 21 says that <clears throat> you know if rho is the density of the planet the time period to the sorry the time period of nearby satellite is given by what expression so this is a straightforward question why straightforward because time period we know you know time period is equal to uh, you know you know 2 pi into square root of r cube by gm that is the time period so what is the time period here? Time period here is that T is equal to 2 pi into square root of R cube divided by G into M. Now it's all about simplification. So it is it turns out to be 2 pi into r power 3 by 2 divided by you know g into mass mass is equal to what you know we can write is that 4 by 3 pi r cube into rho rho is the density because why we bring rho here because that's what is given in the question so definitely we need to bring that one and if we see out of the all the four options in all the four options no hair m is there so that gives us enough indication that we need to convert that mass into volume into density okay so from here what we get from here with simplification we get the value of t is equal to square root of oh sorry so there is a one small change here this should be this entire thing should be power 1 by 2 so i am not going with the algebraic simplification here but if you simplify that will be turn out to be square root of 3 pi by you know g into rho if you have any doubt in this simplification you can contact me anytime in later okay so we get here the correct option as c which is you know square root of 3 pi by g into rho okay so now let's proceed to the next question that is question 22 so question 22 says that you know if the radius of earth is r and the height h at which the value of g become one fourth then what will be the you know value of this h this is quite straightforward a question and i will appreciate if you if all you can do and do let me know your answer you can take a couple of minutes to answer that and do let me know this is quite straightforward so that we can have a very engaged discussion Okay, so I give you uh, two minutes so that you can uh, solve this and, you know, get back to me. So I can give you the hints. The hints you need to, you know, use is that the value of acceleration due to gravity at a height h above the earth's surface is what? That formula you need to use to come to the, you know, result. So I'll give you exactly two minutes from now and... Uh, you can meanwhile you can find the answer
okay so let me help you out so the value of acceleration due to gravity at a height h from the earth surface if we consider this as g prime so this g prime is equal to g by 1 plus h by r whole square okay so from there where we can find is that we can find g prime is equal to g into 1 plus h by r power minus 2 so this implies g prime is equal to g into 1 minus sorry let me write properly g into 1 minus 2h by r because all the other powers of h by r we can ignore so now according to the question g prime is equal to g by 4 isn't it so according to the question g prime is equal to g by 4 and if we apply that what we get g by 4 is equal to g into 1 minus 2h by r so as g is not 0 so we get 1 by 4 is equal to 1 minus 2h by r since g cannot be equal to 0 from here what do we can get from here we can find the value of h i am not going to the that much of simplification so you know step by step simplification so we will get 3 into r by 8 so the value of h what we get is that 3 r by 8 and we get option b as the correct one hope things are clear and we can proceed to the next question that is question 23 okay so your question is that if you get h is equal to r ha huh, the point is that if it is h is equal to r then what will happen is that you know yes what you get is that uh, uh, that that value h by r that expression you need to expand right that there are two formulas for uh, g prime when h is you know comparable to r and when h is not comparable to r so i'll explain you this thing these two formulas are there so we are not supposed to use the this one that to replace the value here with h as r because the formula is different in this context so there are two values of g prime one when it is comparable to r and when it is not comparable to r when it is much much lesser than r okay so let's so in this context we cannot really uh, apply the value h is equal to r in this in, in in this context in this formula okay so now let's proceed to the next question that is question 23 yeah question 23 and question 23 says that okay so question 23 says that the change in the value of g at a height h above the surface of the earth is the same as the depth d below the surface of earth then both d and h are much smaller than the radius of the earth then which of the following must be true very classical question you know uh, and not uh, that difficult a question also because 
you need to apply two formulas here acceleration due to gravity at a height h and acceleration due to gravity at a depth d so if we apply this thing that acceleration due to gravity at height h so acceleration due to gravity at height h at height h if we assume this as gh and we know the formula for gh is equal to g into 1 minus 2h divided by r this is one formula and the acceleration due to gravity at a depth d acceleration due to gravity at height at sorry at depth i'm so sorry at depth d if we assume this as gd gd is equal to we get g into 1 minus d by r g into 1 minus d by r so there are two equations and according to the question gh is equal to gd so if we give this equation as equation 1 and if we give this equation as equation 2 according to the question according to the question gh is equal to gd this implies what this implies g into 1 minus 2h by r is equal to g into 1 minus d by r so gg got cancelled 1 1 also get cancelled so 2h by r is equal to d by g okay and from there we can find the value of 2h is equal to d so from here what we get is equal to you know 2h is equal to d and we get the correct option as c we get the correct option as c So the next, our next question is question 24. And that could be the last question for today's class. And the question here is that, let me uh, go to the question 24. Here it is. The height at which the acceleration due to gravity become g by 9 where g is equal to the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the earth in terms of r the radius of the earth is what this is not that you know difficult a question by now because we have done several you know problem on that so what we know the acceleration due to gravity at a height h if we assume this is equal to gh so what is that gh is equal to gm divided by r plus h whole square correct now according to the question gh is nothing but g by 9 g by 9 because 
g h is equal to g by 9 according to the question and we are applying this one so that becomes what g by 9 is become g m by r square so we write here is that g m divided by r square into into we can write is that r square by r plus h whole square we are just rearranging this thing as we have divided by r square we are also multiplying by r square and that we can do as r square is not equal to zero from a mathematical perspective we can write this thing so from here what we can get is that you know that <clears throat> we get 1 by 9 is equal to now gm by r square is equal to what gm by r square is nothing but g so from here g by 9 is equal to g because gm by r square that's why we divided by r square and multiplied by r square g into r by r plus h whole square so from there what we get we get So we get uh, g by, uh, you know, sorry, not g by 9. Ah, sorry, it got, uh, you know, cancelled here. So it is r by r plus h whole square. So this implies, you know, r by r plus h, r by r plus h is equal to, 1 by 3 actually it is plus minus 1 by 3 but r by r plus h cannot be less than 0 that's why we consider the positive value so from here we get what we get you know r plus h is equal to 3 r r plus h is equal to 3 r and that gives us the idea about h is equal to 2 into r okay and we get the option a as a correct one so with this i would like to conclude today's class because i know uh, tomorrow uh, you have a school and uh, we will again have a continuation of this session on friday same time that is at 9 p.m. IST. If you have any question, you can always be in touch with me over WhatsApp uh, in our WhatsApp group or individually if you have any question. Uh, till then, uh, goodbye. Thank you, Anaga. Excuse me, sir. Thank you very much. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, Pratik, tell me. Sir, can't we use G prime is equal to G into 1 minus 2 H by R? Yeah, that also you can use. But I'm not.